Hello, this is Mesh, and welcome to this Twin Peaks Season 3 Episode 7 Review Recap. So, if you have not watched the episode yet, go and watch it, because this will contain many spoilers. So I want to keep this video under 15 minutes. So I'm not going to cover absolutely everything from the episode, just about six or seven main points which I think stand out around storylines and, I guess, plot reveals and things like that. So I'll jump straight into it. The main point, I think, is probably that letter. So this letter was a bit of a mystery last episode as to what is what is this um, letter, you know, who is it from, who put it here. So we get Hawke's um, idea, which I think is, is very sound. I don't think there's any reason why to qu question that he was probably wrong. So I think he's probably correct. And when he says, Leland put this here. So the, the letter or the pieces of paper are actually from Laura's diary. And it makes sense too when Hawke says, um, he, Leland probably ripped it out because he read some of it and freaked out that it pointed to him. So he has then stashed this stuff. Now, the information within um, the, these pages was pretty interesting too. So if you remember back from the end of season two, when um, Agent Coop goes into the Black Lodge, uh, so does Annie Blackburn. That was played by Heather Graham. Now, the message is from her. So it's a message that she s somehow sends back in time. So Laura gets this in a dream and she writes it down in her diary. So it's a pretty confusing situation, especially if you, if this whole scenario isn't fresh in your head as to what previously happened. So a real quick recap on what actually happened, um, how I interpret it anyway, is that, so Annie goes into Black Lodge. She sees Laura Palmer in there. So that's the dead Laura Palmer. Um, and she sees Agent Coop as well. So she knows that Agent Coop is still in there. So she leaves the Black Lodge um, and in, in the hospital bed, there's actually a deleted scene around this. If you want to, you could probably just Google or go to YouTube and go um, Annie Blackburn uh, Black Lodge deleted scene and you'll probably find it. Um, so if you look at that, so she, she sends a message at that point. She's almost in a trance-like state. So it seems like she sends that message to Laura, Laura Palmer in her dream um, many, many months before that actually event occurs, which is pretty hard to comprehend as to what's going on. But once again, if you've seen those scenes recently, it makes a little bit of sense. It's just she's sending a message back in time. Okay, so yeah, they, they've got the message, but I don't know what they're going to do with it. We also see that Sheriff tries to contact people to kind of uh, confirm or collaborate what actually occurred. Um, and he gets the point from the doctor saying, you know, um, that Agent Coop didn't seem right. So interesting to see where he goes with this. Is that going to be it? Or is he going to possibly pass this information onto the FBI? Because if he does, it will confirm the FBI's suspicions about um, the doppelganger Coop or the Agent Coop that's incarcerated currently. Okay, now on to the next major thing, which is Andy. So we see Andy starting to question um, some some person. So he, I think he's the truck owner. So if you remember last episode, Richard Horn, he ran over that kid in that big truck. And we see the truck in the background. So I assume um, this, this person that Andy's talking to is, is either the truck, truck owner or uh, possibly a flatmate of Richard Horn. So they've tracked down the truck that hit the kid and let's led him back to here. And you can see that the person that Andy's talking to is, he's high strung, something's going on. He just says, meet me in two hours. So Andy gives him the benefit of the doubt and he goes to meet him and he never turns up. Then we see a shot of this house again with the door open. And for me, the suggestion is that that character is actually probably already dead. But to add to this as well, at the very end of this episode, we see someone run into the um, diner and scream, has anyone seen Billy? So is that a suggestion that this character was possibly Billy? I thought he said Billy. If you think he said something else, let me know. But that was my interpretation. Has anyone seen Billy? Okay, another main point I want to raise is, is around Major Briggs, Major Briggs' fingerprints. So we see the, um, well, the, the thing is they don't confirm. The, there's a conversation there which... There's no confirmation with this conversation, but for me, I liked it because it um, it makes sense that they don't know what's going on either, and they detail out the inconsistencies in the story that you have someone that was in his mid to late 40s go missing 20 years ago, but now his body's turned up and his body hasn't aged. 
Um, so where's he been for 25 years? You know, even if he was missing for 25 years and alive, your body would still age. So there's something weird going on there. And it's good to see that they've picked that up as well. And there's also a very strange character that which walked behind uh, when they're on the phone call. There was a very strange character which kind of crept through the suggestion there of that something's going on with that person. But it was very little information. You hardly even saw them apart from um, they looked uh, very ominous. <laughs> I will say like that was all I say because they were just the movement that was so slowly and creepy it was pretty good. Okay, on to the next, next main part probably be the FBI agents, so we see Rosenfield and Gordon Cole um, going to talk to Diane, and they convince her to come to the prison to see, to try and talk to this, um, who they think is Agent Cooper, just to confirm if she gets the same feeling as them, and she does, straight away, so she knows um, something's wrong. We also see Tammy as well, um, she's the agent which is assisting, um, points out the whole fingerprint issue. I'm not sure how to interpret that because in a way, they seem to say, yes, you're onto something. But on the other hand, they also seem very dismissive that this could have been an error with the fingerprints themselves. But I don't think this would be raised without there being something legitimate here. So I think they need to take another look. Maybe they dismissed her, but they'll take another look and go more into that when they have more time. Um, but yeah, we see, uh, once again, Diane confirms and tells uh, Gordon Cole that there's something. I need to tell you something a bit later. But, you know, she agrees this is not... Um, Dale, this is not the person that she knows. And also we have a hint of a relationship there, well a pretty big hint, um, which is cool. I liked how they kind of just tease the idea, they don't go into detail. You don't need to go into detail, I think that was enough, but I think it was quite cool. Okay, now on to the next scene, which is back um, with Dougie. Well, not Dougie, but Agent Cooper. Let's just call him Doug, we'll just call him Dougie for, <laughs> to make it easier. So we see Dougie, um, I guess his friend is trying to talk to him and he's just ignoring him. Not really intentionally ignoring him, just that's how Dougie is, obviously. Then we see the cops come down. So he gets visited by the police. And we get good to get some confirmation around what was going on as well. So they've obviously found the car, an explosion, and there was dead bodies around the car. So they say the reason why, um, well, not the reason why, but the people trying to steal the car was actually a gang of car thieves anyway. So... In a way, I want to dismiss that black car now with full of those people as just a coincidence. Um, and which is good because, I mean, if you tie it, you know, say that was a coincidence, that was just a strange occurrence. And it's good because it kind of rules out some complexity with the story. To, you know, there's less people to keep track of. So let's just for now say that would, that black car, it was coincidental that they tried to steal the car that had the bomb on it. <laughs> we'll just leave it like that. But yeah, so they say, you know, um, tr I'm not trying to pin it on Dougie to say what's happened here, but, you know, they say, um, you know, what's going on? He said the car was stolen. Well, Janie E did. Once again, fantastic scene with her. She's so aggressive. She's awesome. I really like that character now. But yeah, and then we see Dougie and her leave. And for a split second there, we see the um, the small assassin or what do you want to call him? He goes to get Dougie. And Dougie drops him straight away. Like it was a, it was cool because it was Agent Coop. Agent Coop came back in a time of need, so he is definitely there. It's just unable to consistently be there. And we see as well when he is pinned him down, <laughs> giving him the odd smack in the throat, <laughs> which was pretty cool. Um, we saw the, the um, the arm come out of the, come out of the ground, saying, you know, squeeze his hand off. Uh, I guess that's. Possibly, you know, could is that something to do with the Black Lodge there? Um, or is that just, once again, this kind of intuition that he has now? Because now he's squeezed his hand off, he's going to get, you know, the DNA or the prints from this, this hand that he got. Because a lot of skin came off him, so they've got quite a bit of detail about this character now. So that was pretty cool, once again, the, the kind of Black Lodge helping out Dougie at the moment. So that was quite cool to see. Now another, um, an area which is pretty confusing I don't you know once again it, it's it's giving you information about what's going on so you know that you're kind of meant to be confused I think is the suggestion here but it's the doppelganger um, the doppelganger coop I want to call him so he approaches Warden Murphy and says you know I want to talk about strawberry 
and um, immediately the warden's like, oh, okay, what, what do you know? Or he holds a gun to him, turns off the security camera, so something's up. And he, he just bribes him, saying he knows exactly what's going on. He mentions a character, Joe McClastley. Um, I don't know any information about that. I don't know anything information about some person called Strawberry. If you guys know, put some comments below. I'd be interested to hear that. But either way, the situation is that he's bribed the warden and he's free. So he's out. Um, so that's not good because as you, we can see throughout for every episode, this character is evil and very dangerous and everyone knows it. Everyone that talks to him, you can see he's just freaking out. So it's not good that he's out. But anyway, he is out. So there's going to be trouble. And finally as well, I just want to bring up the Ben Horn scene. So we have Ben and Beverly in, in the office trying to figure out there's a sound and they're trying to track it down. Now, for me, as soon as the scene ends, you see the camera go into the wall. Now, I remember from previous um, seasons that that building has, there's eyes in the wall. And when I say that, I mean the walls are all hollow. And there's many places that people used to, you know, look through, open, move the picture, and you could see through, the, through, see through. So I wonder if maybe that noise is maybe a camera recording, trying to, someone's in the wall and they've done something in there, put a camera in there, something like that. And also it's good to see the keys as well. So the keys that Agent Coop had, which Jade sent back in the mail, have made it back. So once again, all these things are timed back. So now Ben has the keys. Um, so he could go to the police to say, you know, this is strange that this has come back to us. So he goes to the sheriff department to say, you know, the keys that Agent Coop had, which ties in with the letter, which points to um, saying the good Coop is still in the Black Lodge. So maybe the co coincide um, of that will they'll bring the FBI and confirm that um, that the doppelganger Coop is not the right Coop. And I wonder as well, the scene with um, how... Dougie's, well, Dougie or Agent Coop took down the the assassin and then it was on TV. Was Dougie recorded in those scenes? Because we see a lot of cameras around recording interviews with other people. Was was Dougie interviewed? If he was, is that going to be the catalyst for someone, an FBI agent, to see that footage and go, hey, hang on, there's another person that looks like Agent Coop um, down here. And we got, you know, so I think maybe there's... The start is starting to tie in now. I think it's getting close to where everyone's going to figure it out. It's all going to click, which is good because you need to limit how long things like that go on for. But anyway, okay, I'll just. It's good now because we're just under fifteen minutes, so I'll wrap it up with just a few questions. Um, see if you guys can figure it out. I'm, these are still questions that I don't know. Um, you know, there's many interpretations on the show, so this this is why the show is awesome. But yeah, I guess the one question would be. Who was that character um, and what happened to him around uh, that Andy spoke to? So was that character killed? Was that character Billy? So when the person ran into the diner and said, where's Billy? Is that the same character? What do you think? For me, it kind of makes sense. It's, a, it's in the right order of sequence. So, you know, talking to him, had an interview. Uh, he doesn't turn up. We go back to see the doors open. So something has occurred there. And then all of a sudden we have some random stranger shouting for someone who we're not familiar with. So could that be could that be the sequence of that person is Billy and that person is dead, and that person has been killed by Richard Horn possibly, to keep his to keep his story. So now he can just pin that story on on the dead Billy. Um, who was that strange person in the morgue? That was creepy. That scene when she, as soon as she was on the phone, as soon as she started saying something's not right here, his head's missing, and and when she started giving the you know the main general the details the music kicked in that character creepily walked behind her that was really creepy but yeah who is that character um i'd have never seen a reference to anyone like that before but was it just a strange a random stranger i don't think so there's no coincidences coincidences in this show okay and the final thing is what yeah what's making the the noise in uh, ben horn's office I kind of think it's something in the wall. And just with that final camera shot, how it, it just zoomed into the wall, makes me think there's a suggestion there that something is in the wall. And once again, I know the walls are hollow in that place, uh, as it was always shown. So maybe someone is recording them or something's in the wall. Um, but yeah, I'll leave us here. So let me know your thoughts on those questions. Let me know, your, did you like the episode? For me, I really liked it. I thought it was really good. Once again, 
probably one of my, my favorite ones. A lot happened, um, and it's all these episodes are fantastic so far. I really enjoyed them. But yeah, leave us here. So thumbs up if you like this little review. Um, once again, leave, leave your thoughts on the episode if you want, and also on my questions. And subscribe for future content from me here. And until next time, this is Mish, and I will see you later.